Hey, Sean from Grim Parts Co. And today I want to show you our strut eliminator kit for FXRs. Uh, these are a little bit unique. Nobody makes these other than us. All right, our strut eliminator kit is made from inch and a quarter DOM 120 wall tubing. Um, we have machine bungs and fully threaded bungs that you install. Today I'm going to show you the process of putting them on. Uh, some of the advantages are you eliminate the struts altogether. They're very strong. They work great with our adventure bag kits and they also work as a standalone unit. Um, it allows you to install accessories on the outside without messing with your fender. Um, and they're a nice upgrade to your stock bike. Today I've got a 92 FXR here. We're going to install our strut eliminator kit on. I want to put this video together so you can kind of see. And of course, with all of our products, it comes a full instruction sheet. Um, this is a Project Freedom Chicken, and it's getting a lot of stuff. But today we're just going to focus on the strut eliminator part of it. All right. So first things first, you want to get the bike up on a center stand. These flat jacks are great for that. The back side of the FXR is a good place to get a good flat spot to jack it up on. So I'm going to get it up and in the air just a little bit. Okay, once you get the shocks off, go ahead and just jack the bike up uh, to get to the inner fender bolts. Just make it easier on yourself. Looks so funny. She <laughs> works for it. <laughs> God. Once you got everything loose, I usually like to leave a bolt or two in. This has a sissy bar. It gets a little tricky. It's nice to have an extra hand if you've got one. I don't. So take off your strut on both sides. I like to support the fender so it doesn't fall on you. Once you get the uh, sissy bar here loose, you can pull it up and out. The last bolt is this one right behind the battery box under here. Once you loosen that, go ahead and I like to press the fender in a little bit and then just take the whole unit out. I'm gonna go ahead and take the wheel out also just to get it completely out of the way. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be removing the stock bungs that are welded in here on the frame. Uh, this part is a little, a little time consuming. Um, you wanna be careful to just kind of grind the weld uh, and then we'll knock the bungs out and get ready to install the new strut eliminator kit. All right, so with your punch, you just kind of work them back and forth. This one's come loose, pop her out, and then if you hit on it a lot and it doesn't want to move very much like this was starting to budge now, you don't want to wail on it so you don't deform the tubing, but just keep grinding and working at it. And then uh, eventually it'll do one of those. Just to save yourself a little bit of headache, I take the handy dandy little Dremel here, clean up the inside of the frame a little bit because we're gonna be slipping stuff in here. We go through, take a little extra time and a stronger Dremel's nice to have. A little sanding roll rash. Oh, you betcha. It's kind of fun too, it makes a nice noise. It's like a swarm of bees. Coming to ruin your day. Okay, so now we have uh, both sides cleaned up. We've test fit this side and got the bung installed. Uh, this one was a little bit sticky, so I just had to hit it with a Dremel sanding roll, kind of get it to fit. I mean, it's gonna go in a little snug, and that's what you want, obviously. So like that pushed in there. Um, use a brass hammer so you don't butter the end up, and then just tap it through. Uh, I like to leave them lined up evenly on both sides. It's about an eighth of an inch, roughly. Uh, you can eyeball it or you can be super particular and measure. Once we get the other ends with the jig on, all that'll come into place pretty easily. Okay, the next step of this process is to go ahead and put this guy on. Uh, this is your strut extension itself. I think I mentioned before, but I'll say it again, the inside of this, we leave the burrs in it. So at this point, when you're ready, you it's gonna need a little bit of a tap. See how that goes on kind of snug? That's what you want. That's why we leave the burrs in there. It helps with alignment and stuff. Um, so when you get them, don't freak out. And don't stick your finger in there and slice it all up and then blame us for it. That would be stupid. 
so that's what it looks like on. They're nice and snug. We're gonna install the jigs next. Uh, and then take a few measurements and get ready to actually tack weld this together. Your kit comes with jigs, plates. They're gonna look a little different than these. These are the shop ones. Uh, basically, it's gonna come with your hardware. So just line everything up. This will ensure that your distances and everything are right. It would also help with squareness. There's a measurement center to center back here. You're gonna double check once we get everything tightened. So go ahead and tighten these guys up. It should roll around a little bit, get them in place, do the other side, take a measurement here, and then we're just about ready to tack everything together. Got everything set up for welding. I'm just gonna double check everything because once this is tacked on, you don't wanna have to try to make some adjustments. Um, normally I have a much shorter level, but I guess I took it home for something. So I found this one laying around. Lay it across here, do a check, and then go across here. And we're pretty, pretty close. Like I said, the measurement back here is eight and a half. I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple tacks on. I'm gonna check everything again. This is a process where welding can kind of pull and tweak things, and if you know how to weld, then you should know that already. Uh, I would recommend, if you don't know, I would have somebody who does know how to weld do this. Uh, you can get it all set up to this point and take it to somebody. Uh, we recommend TIG welding, of course. I guess you could MIG weld this stuff. Not really our cup of tea. So from there, we'll go ahead and tack everything, do a couple more checks, and then you can kind of go to town and get it all welded in. Okay, so I did a quick couple little tacks on the top. Um, go ahead and check your measurements again. Check your measurement back here. This is the time you wanna make any tweaks. This is a little bit wide, you can put a little pressure on it. Um, we'll check the level, make sure that it's straight across and nothing's changed there. Like I said, I recommend a much smaller level. Normally I have one, of course today I don't. And that's pretty close, uh, I mean, when I say pretty close, I mean plus or minus, you know, like a 32nd. <laughs> I try to keep this stuff as straight as possible. These holes that we supplied here are plug welds. Uh, I like to go ahead and get everything else sort of a couple beads on so it's really not gonna go anywhere and then go ahead and nail the plug welds. You can do that after the jigs come off. We'll go ahead and take the jigs off. Um, I take the last couple measurements with them off to make sure Everything's everything. All right, so we're a little high there. Do a little tapper. Precision. We have tacked it all together, double checked our level. We've got a good eight and a half to, uh, on center measurement back here. I have had to hammer things in a little bit uh, here and there to get them straight. I'm gonna go ahead and hit a couple of the plug welds, a couple more around the seam here. I'll double check as I go along. There'll be a point though where it's not gonna move anymore and you can kind of just finish things up. I just like to be really thorough because if it tweaks, it really makes it a pain in the ass to uh, get it fixed if you get too much weld on it. Okay, so now we've got everything welded. Uh, along the process, we check for straightness across the board. You want to sort of continue to do that as you're going through. Um, weld everything up, uh, all the plug welds, the seam welds. And then once you're to this point, uh, it's up to you if you want to metal finish all the welds to make it look pretty seamless, which you can do, which I'm gonna do on this one. Uh, I have done these in the past where I just weld them because there's so many welds on FXR frames. It just kind of, once it's all powdered or powder coated or painted, it looks, it, it looks like it was supposed to be there. These bungs are threaded all the way through. So your fender now, you can run some short bolts on the fender. Uh, you can add, well, our bag mounts on the outside of this or anything else that you may want to bolt onto it. There's a, a 5 16 18 threaded bolt on the end of each one of these. You can put bungee nuts, uh, anything you want for carrying luggage or traveling. Uh, just some nice mounting points. I feel like we put a pretty comprehensive video together here. If you have any questions or whatever, make sure you review the video before you get started, know what you're doing. I think you ought to use a, a, if you're not a good welder, find a good welder to help you out with this. TIG welding is the best option for this project. Double check all your measurements and everything. Um, be sure to check out all of our other products on our website, grimpartsco.com. Uh, we're constantly coming up with new stuff. Uh, this next year should be amazing for parts and, and accessories that we've got coming out at you. Smell you later. Yeah, bye-bye. Smell you later, internet world.